there are a lot of people who wonder why you should be allowed to continue to box in the highest profile events when you've got the, the track record that you have, when in other sports there have been serious repercussions for some of these athletes. Well, everybody's, you know, when it's all said and done, only God, God can judge you, but I don't want people to miss this fight. This is an unbelievable matchup. This weekend, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao will step into a ring in Las Vegas and make millions of dollars, tens of millions for themselves and, of course, everyone who's been in their orbit waiting for this title fight to happen for a decade or more. Boxing's not a sport with angels and many feel-good stories anymore from shark fin promoters who would use and abuse anyone at any time for a buck to fighters like Mayweather who job the system to ensure they face low-grade competition to pad their record and proclaim themselves the greatest of all time. But this bout has a different and even darker underbelly. Mayweather was the guy who has pled guilty to domestic violence charges at least three separate times, serving two months in jail for attacking the mother of two of his children. He served and suspended sentences and house arrest. A former fiancé claims he beat and threatened her for two years. Yet he still gets a license to fight, is still adored by a community that can't get enough of his skills and his ability to ring cash registers. Our guest is investigative reporter for ESPN, a veteran who's been awarded many times for his work, including by my good friends at the Center for the Study of Sport and Society at Northeastern University in Boston. His recent story on Floyd has everyone in and out of boxing buzzing. Pleasure to welcome John Barr to the hard line. John, thanks for being here. Pleasure to be here. Thanks. John, as you look at Floyd Mayweather, you get a chance to talk to him. And again, I've had a chance to speak with him as well. But is it just fair to say that this is a guy who is simply in denial or quite frankly knows he's a fellow who's got the talent and can get away with it and he doesn't have to answer your questions or anybody else's. He can use God or anything else, but he's just going to get away with it. It's hard to know if it's uh, just he's living in a state of denial or if this is just a cleverly crafted public relations strategy on his part. Uh, it's hard to know what kind of advice he's getting from the people around him, but he's been fairly consistent in the few interviews where he has addressed this through the years and essentially, he says things like, only God can judge me. He's even taken the tack, as he did so in a, a segment that we ran uh, during an, an interview, uh, an extended interview with Stephen A. Smith, in referring to the past incidents of uh, abuse. He said, you know, these are allegations. There haven't been any pictures. Well, there are more than just allegations. There's actual convictions. He's been convicted five times. Uh, two of those convictions were later vacated and dismissed, but he was convicted five times of assaulting four different women. And with regard to the presence of pictures, well, on the night you referred to, uh, the, the incident that ultimately led to jail time for Mayweather, uh, where he uh, assaulted the mother of three of his kids, Josie Harris, Josie Harris was wheeled away on a stretcher that night, and there was indeed video taken of that. TMZ got its hands on that video and, and we aired that video. So those are pictures and they're fairly compelling pictures which speak to, you know, the physical toll. So, John, with all this, how does this guy, and many people will ask this, get a license to box in Las Vegas? And not only that, we have sports right now that are so concerned about abuse of women, yet boxing doesn't seem to give a damn. Well, that's the question that led us to do this story, ultimately. Uh, we wanted to know why boxing officials why no governing body of boxing, and of course there are many, that's part of the issue, why no governing body weighed in at any point to say, you know what, we're going to make a stand, we're going to yank your license. Mayweather has fought most of his fights in Las Vegas. He's the biggest draw in boxing right now. His last eight fights have generated more than $80 million just in non-gambling revenue. There it is, John, right there, right there. there. It is yeah. the money. And the people at the, at the Nevada, at, uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission, haven't they just really come out or are they willing to come out and say, hey, come on, John, it's all about the money and you know it as well as we do. Well, they, they don't take that tack. Uh, we interviewed Pat Lundvall, uh, the only female member of the five-member Nevada State Athletic Commission, she took the position. She's a very skilled attorney. She's been a partner in a Vegas law firm for 20 years. She took the position that Mayweather had paid his debt to society. But if you look at the timing, he was uh, sentenced in December of 2011 for the assault on Josie Harris. The judge in that case allowed Mayweather to stay out of jail until June of 2012. Why? Because he had a fight in May against Miguel Cotto. So the judge tailored his delayed his reporting time to jail so he could get a fight in. In that interim period, the Athletic Commission could have made a stand, could have said, you know what, 
No, you're not going to fight. We're well, not going to license have. you to fight. No, of but course. They, didn't. they could have. I only got about 20 seconds left. Look, you and I both know this reporting on boxing for a lot of years as well. This is a dirty sport. I mean, this isn't this is a seamy underbelly sport that really could care less about social issues. All they want to do is cough as much cash as possible as quickly as possible. Well, you said it, not me. Okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I I'm happy paid, to say that. I don't get I don't get paid for my opinion, obviously, <laughs> but uh, if you, if you were to ask me point blank, is money driving a lot of the decision making in boxing and in any sport? The answer is an unequivocal. Absolutely. Absolutely. John, you do excellent work, my friend. Thank you so much for it. I want to remind everybody next airing of Outside the Line, Sunday, May 3rd at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. John, please keep up the excellent work, and I hope we get a chance to talk to you again. Thanks so much. I All right. My it. pleasure. Take care. And that's for a reason why a lot of people won't go see the fight this weekend.